Namaste and welcome to my bedroom. <laughs> my name is Cassandra and I'm going to take you through this relax and stretch evening yoga practice. This is wonderful to do before you go to bed at night. We're not going to be moving very fast. All of the poses are very low to the earth. This is very grounding and just a great way to prepare for a wonderful night's sleep. I'm not using any props and this is great for all levels. So whether you're beginner, intermediate or advanced, you should find this really nourishing and soothing. So let's begin in Balasana, wide like a child's pose. You can bring your big toes together to touch and bring your knees out as wide as you would like to. So this one is completely up to you. Just finding enough sensation so that you feel a stretch through your inner thighs and into your hips and I like to extend the arms forward while still pressing my shoulders down and away from the ears and especially in this pose try to focus your breath in your lower belly and you might count up to four five or six as you inhale feeling your lower stomach really inflate like a balloon and find that same count of four five or six as you draw your navel back towards your lower back letting all of the air out so finding a rhythm that works for you tonight letting go of your day knowing that all is well you've done your best today and now you have full permission to relax tomorrow will be a new day and take five more breaths right here Stay in this child's pose, Balasana, but just stretch your arms out a little further, coming up onto your fingertips. Really lengthen and reach out. And you can walk your hands back in. Take your time. Really try not to rush in and out of poses. We are relaxing from our day. And we're just going to come into a tabletop pose so we can step our right foot to the outer edge of our right hand. So both palms are to the inside of that right leg. And you want to have your knee pretty much over the top of your ankle. And take a moment here to ground as you really press your hips forward and down and lengthen through your heart, through your chest, still shrugging your shoulder blades down your back. Letting gravity pull your hips lower. We'll come from here into Gomukhasana or shoelace pose, at least a variation of it. So you can start those toes that are in the back. See if you can bring them a little bit over towards the right bottom side of your mat. Send your hips back and you're going to cross your right thigh over your left. So you want to reach your feet away from one another as much as possible and just start to press your hips back. If flexibility is limited, you might just be holding here, pushing it down. Otherwise, you might be able to bring your hips on the floor, 
And one option can be to just work the pose and work the stretch, sitting up nice and tall, or you can fold on down to really get into the IT band, the outer hips. And go Mukhasana cow face pose, trying to stack one knee over the other. And we're only here for a few breaths, so don't worry too much about which variation you end up in. Breathe into the intensity of the pose. Relax your shoulders and your neck. And we'll come into a straight legged forward fold so you can push into the floor, lift on up. And from wherever you were, we're just going to extend our legs out in front of us. I'm going to make this a very passive forward fold, meaning I'm letting my spine naturally round. I'm not worrying about how far I'm getting into this one. So as much as you're probably feeling this along the back of your legs, we're also trying to release along the spine. Forward folds are just so great to do before bed. So what can you let go of from your day? What can you release? See if you can even tuck your chin to your chest a little bit more. Walk our hands in, lift up nice and slow. And just bring your feet in a little windshield wiper motion here, dropping the knees side to side as a way to release your lower back. Before we go and repeat the sequence over on the other side, we're going to take a half Supta Varasana or half reclined hero pose. Bring your right foot back in. So you want to have your right thigh parallel to the longer edge of your mat. Your heel is on the outside pointing up and you want the top of your foot to really be flat to the floor. See if you can lift and tuck your tailbone under before setting your hips down and try to keep your knee pressing into the floor so you're getting a nice thigh stretch. And you might just stay up here if it's suitable for your body. You can also lower down on your forearms or all the way down onto the mat. We'll take five deep breaths here. Big release through the hip flexors, through the quads. Maintain that same breath rhythm, inhaling for a count of four, five, or six. Maybe your breath is even deeper, going to seven or eight, but matching that count on the exhale, in and out through your nose. And if you were laying and reclined, you can push into your hands to lift on up. And let's find tabletop pose on hands and knees. Let's find that dragon pose or lizard pose on the other side. Your left foot steps forward to the top of the mat, both palms to the inside of that leg, knee is over your ankle, toes are pointing forward, and you're just working on melting tension from your pelvis through the inner groin, through your hip flexors. Your arms are there for support. Try not to struggle against the floor. Maybe close your eyes as you bring your focus inward 
to your breath or to the internal sensations. You might choose to repeat, I am calm, I am relaxed, I am grounded. We'll transition from here into Gomukhasana, so you can start to bring your right toes a little bit over to the left, and you're going to cross your left thigh stacking it on top of the right so left knee stacks over the right one and maybe just push your hips back until you get a nice stretch through the outer thighs or go all the way into it by letting your hips come down to the floor maybe holding from here or melting it down further and when i give these options in poses the progression doesn't mean worst to best. The benefits of the pose really are the same whether you're going super deep into it or not. Regardless of what this pose looks like for you, we are all opening up our hips. We are all releasing our low back. So try not to judge the experience or set too many expectations on yourself. This is meant to be a self-care practice that we do at the end of the day. So the last thing we want is to start judging the experience or being critical of ourselves and of our body. Try to let go as much as you can. Let's walk it out. We'll come into another forward fold. If you wanted to do the straight leg fold like we did before, again, you're welcome to do that. Otherwise, we can take a Baddha Konasana butterfly fold, bringing the soles of the feet together, knees apart. And this one also, I'm going to make it very passive, just soothing and relaxing. I like to turn my palms to face up and just gradually softening into the shape so that again, even though you're probably feeling the most intensity in your hips and in your lower body, we are still trying to decompress along our spine. So no tension even in your jaw, even notice along your eyes and in your cheeks. Can you relax a little more? Push your hands into the floor, take your time, inch by inch, we roll up. And we'll just do that same windshield wiper motion with the knees, so letting knees and thighs drop from one side to the other as a way to release the low back. Setting ourselves up for that quad stretch on the other side, half reclined hero. Bring your left shin back, left foot back. And do make sure you have your calf on the outside of your thigh. Both hips are parallel. Push into the top of your foot and you can lift your hips, tuck the tailbone under, keep pushing your left knee into the floor and go any amount into this stretch. It's very normal for one side to feel different than the other.
take another big breath, sending it all the way down through your belly. And we'll lift up nice and slow. And one last time, let's make our way tabletop pose. And we'll finish with a little puppy stretch on a hatasana. Keeping your hips over your knees, walk your palms forward, and melt your heart and your chest to the mat. And I'm going to relax my arms in this one so that my elbows stay on the floor. Try not to sink into your low back too much here. Instead, try to focus on your chest, making its way closer to the floor and to the mat. Just bend at your elbows. We'll come into a little crocodile pose, kind of like a little belly shavasana. One hand over the other, just let your forehead rest over your palms. And take a few moments here to breathe into your low back, feeling your lower abdomen push into the floor as you inhale, and it relaxes back on the exhale. I am calm, I am relaxed, I am grounded. What are you letting go of from today? And you might want to just roll onto one side into a little fetal pose. Cradle your head into your arm. And we'll come to take a seat. Push into the floor nice and slow sitting in any way that is comfortable and suitable for you. Bringing your hands together at the front of your heart, closing your eyes. Let's close our practice with the chant of Om one time. Inhale to chant, big breath in. Namaste. Thank you so very much for doing this stretch and relax evening yoga practice with me. I hope you enjoyed it and that you feel ready for bed. If you'd like to stay longer, I would recommend doing this meditation right here before you drift off to sleep. Please subscribe and hopefully I'll practice again with you very soon.